couple days ago, I finished Groot, and I promised when I put this video out that I would go through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I did this, because really I was figuring things out and working on different techniques, and I didn't feel that I was ready to do the video on it until I was done and I had the technique down perfectly. So there's a couple of things on here. First of all, the smoke, the backlighting, the brightness, the neon, everything going, the glow, everything just came together in this picture. And this is a gift for my son-in-law, along with Spider-Man, because he loves Marvel. And I'm totally thrilled with this. So the next thing I was going to do is the tutorial on how to do this. And I was pretty sure that I had everything worked out. And I'm still pretty sure I do, but it just didn't work out that way. This didn't come out bad. I liked it. Now, the problem was is that I ran out of spray on this. And I had started using Rust-Oleum Clear. This is an old can of it. Um, in fact, I have old spray paint from another project on it because I ran out of my usual Krylon. And I know I've used this in the past and it's been okay. So my father went out and bought me a brand new can of it. Now, I had sprayed my Groot with this one and it was fine. Same technique, same everything. I sprayed with the brand new can of the Rust-Oleum Clear Enamel. And what I found was it, it was okay. It, it, the picture came out fine. It was cute bubbles. I, I like it. It's, I mean, it's nothing that I would hang up because it's just bubbles, but it came out okay. But in certain spots, it wore down the pencil too much. It really was too strong for what I was doing on here. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I used paint thinner on it. Now, paint thinner dissolves. It doesn't, this is low odor. But the only difference between this and this was the Rust-Oleum versus Cry um, Krylon. And I used this with Rust-Oleum. And I just think it was a little bit too much chemicals. So put that away, learn for the future. You were never going to see this. So now you're seeing it, but it gets worse. <laughs> a lot worse. So let's take it to the next day. I said, okay, I'm going to work on another picture. And I created this. And you know what? I liked this a lot. And I love the way the moon came out. In fact, I promised one of my subscribers, oh, I have a moon coming out in my next uh, video. And, you know, don't worry, I'll give the tutorial. So I... I like this. What it started out with, instead of a mountain, it just happened to look like a, a misty mountain when I was done. It was supposed to be mountains with lightning coming down, but I just kept on going and it turned into this misty mountain and I really liked this picture. So I was like, oh, I got to include this in my tutorial on how I did the mist and the glow. And it was great. Okay, I added in another factor, and that was gouache. So now I've got marker, gouache. Gouache created this misty effect with pencil over it. I've got gel on it. The gel pencil did make it a little bit lumpy. It gave it a little bit of a texture to it, but it probably isn't the gel pencil. I did something else. I needed more, not more tooth on the page, but I wanted to put down a fixative that wasn't a final fixative. And the only one I had was my brush and pencil. And my brush and pencil, the can went crazy and started spitting out all these gloppy, hard pieces. Now, I'm going to say that it does sometimes do that. It gives you like a little bit of a texture so that your pencil can rub up against it and that's normal. But this was not normal. The can got clogged. The I didn't wash the cap, you know, the, the nozzle out last time and I didn't do a pre-spray. I just went in my little lotted out world and went on it. Never do that. Ever, ever do that. Always do a pre-spray 
just in case. So I got a lot of these little gloppy things that they put into the paint all sprayed on this picture at once. So it did give it a little bit of a texture, but it's not horrible. It gave it like kind of like a, I don't know, like a, a feel that I, I liked. So I really like this picture and it looks better in person. I don't know what it's coming out looking like on camera, but I'm hoping I could duplicate this again. So I said, okay, this is not the picture that's going to be for the tutorial on how to make it glow. Scrap picture number two. I said, you know what? I'm going too technical. Okay, too many steps, too much. I need something better and simpler. What is more simple than Big Bird? Now, this is one that I had started out working on, and it's got marker, it's got wax, it's got gel, it's got, um, what else does it have on it, on this one? Nothing else on this one, because I never finished this one, because I realized that this was not the sketch I wanted to use in the tutorial. I have a different sketch that I want to use. So I'm going to redraw Big Bird. Well, before I show you this next sketch that I'm, I did, I have to get to the day that I finished this second one. So now I'm working, I can't even tell you how many hours, I think it's like four days that I'm working on this. And I haven't left my craft room to the point where my craft room is such a disaster right now. I don't even want to show it to you. It is that bad. So I said to myself, you know what? Calm down. Don't panic. It's Saturday night. You'll finish your big bird. Your uh, picture will be ready by the morning. I had already slept um, early in the evening. I had fallen asleep watching a movie and my husband just left me there on the couch. I think he was going to just laugh at me because I kept putting my hand up going, I'm not sleeping. I was out. It, I don't even remember what movie we put on. That's how fast I fell asleep. So I woke up. It was probably about midnight when I woke up and I was raring to go for the night, so I knew I had plenty of time to do another one of these. And I did. And I did my sketch. And I'm still not showing you the picture yet because that'll come at the end when you get to laugh at me. And I was going to go all out. And it was working out nicely. I had a, uh, a nice base. I did a nice fade with the marker into the brightness behind the bird. Everything was working out great. Now I added marker, gel, wax, thinner, and I cleaned the nozzle and added brush and pencil textured fi fixative because I needed a little bit more and I got it working. Pencil, both oil and wax, and everything was looking good. And I got the picture done and I was ready to, you know, ready to do the final spray. And I made sure I got out my Rust-Oleum and I gave it a spray. For some reason, this can had no spray in it. There was something wrong with this, this uh, can. No matter how much I sprayed it, I gave it like three coats and I got like no shine on my paper. All I got was like, it was like it was no shine. And I'm looking at the can and I'm saying, okay, it's clear. It doesn't say anything high gloss. Maybe my father bought the wrong stuff, but it's the same. There's no difference. They're the same bottles. The everything on it is the same. I went everything. For some reason, this had no... So now I have like two or three coats of this Rust-Oleum clear enamel on it. And I sent my father out to the store. But it, with it being Sunday, Hobby Lobby isn't open where I can get my artist grade Krylon spray for pictures. And my father came home with Krylon crystal clear glaze, triple thick. I said, mm, okay, let me try it. And I went outside, I shook the can. I actually did take a piece of test paper 
and I sprayed the test paper and it was okay. It came back shiny. And I, I said, okay, I'm ready to do a spray. Well, I sprayed this on top of all those other chemicals. Well, apparently using all those chemicals together is not the same as just spraying your picture. And my picture turned into this with one coat. <laughs> Look what I did to Big Bird. <laughs> I toxified him. Now, it was not supposed to come out looking like this. It looked a lot better before I sprayed him. The next thing I know, well, it looks nice and shiny now. I brought this into the house and I guess it was a little bit, still a little bit wet when I brought it in. I hadn't noticed the odor that was coming off of this picture to the point where there was practically fumes on it. And by the minute, the products that I had put on the page were curdling. And I didn't notice it. I go into my room and all I could say is, thank God my birds are not in this room. My dog is over at my daughter's house because we share the dog. So it's her. I get her three days. They get them four days. So my dog is over at my daughter's house. And, oh, if anybody has never shared a dog, there's a long story. It's their dog who fell in love with me. We'll tell that story at another time. So the next thing I know, I'm watching Big Bird curdle. And the brightness start to go out and it's turning see-through or translucent in the middle of it. Yet outside was the bright white where the um, gouache was and the fumes started. And all I could say is thank God the animals were not in the room. Now at the beginning, um, Ming was in the room. I would never spray where Ming was, but I didn't even notice. It didn't start to curdle, and this didn't happen immediately. It took a few minutes, and so Ming is fine. All of a sudden, I start to get dizzy, and I'm like, what the hell? And the smell is getting worse and worse. Instead of better, as like a these cans of stuff, they dry, you, they lose the odor. It's getting worse and worse. My eyes are tearing. I'm having trouble breathing. My father comes in. He opens up my window, which it basically spans the entire wall behind me. So the, the room is now open to the air. We nearly called the fire department. I had to use my father's oxygen. My father has COPD, so we do have oxygen in the house. Although he's not on oxygen all the time, it's just for bad days. I had to go on my father's oxygen and we nearly called the fire department because I electrified Big Bird. So before you guys make a toxic mess out of things yourself, let me give you a little bit of a warning. <laughs> Test your materials outside and let them fully dry outside. It's a lesson learned. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.